Hey everyone, uh, really glad to be here today. Uh, I'm here today to talk about some work I did in a previous life um, about how my team and I were able to effectively automate debt management, um, specifically in our DBT deployment. So first, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is David Wallace. Uh, I'm currently a senior data engineer uh, at Dutchie. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Dutchie, uh, we're the largest cannabis e-commerce platform in North America. Uh, and the work I'm going to talk to you about today specifically was done um, originally done at a previous company uh, called Good Eggs, but I think it's like highly transferable, um, and I think it may resonate with a lot of you. So to start off, uh, something I think probably won't shock anyone here is that uh, we love DBT. Um, for those from, for those of you unfamiliar with DBT, DBT is a data transformation tool that um, effectively allows analysts and engineers to use SQL to construct data transformations in their data warehouse. Um, it's been a total game changer for us. Um, it's been a game changer in the data space as well uh, for the last few years. Uh, and on top of that has a really wonderful community. Um, the data team at Good Eggs really enthusiastically adopted DBT into their workflows. Um, and pretty quickly our DBT project became the hub of all of our data transformation work. Um, but one thing that we noticed is that as more folks started using DBT day to day, uh, and as we started scaling the data org outwards to more and more people, um, the number of DBT models in our project scaled, uh, scaled quite rapidly. Um, and because we were deploying so many more models at any given time, um, the execution time of our project also scaled pretty rapidly as well. Um, not only this, but we, we, we also noticed that folks were suddenly having uh, a, a lot harder of a time finding the content they wanted to, to find in our DBT project. Uh, and we noticed that this was leading to a pattern of forking DBT models instead of updating them, um, ultimately creating more and more project bloat over time. Um, and what we realized is that we had a little bit of a scaling problem on our hands. Um, we noticed that uh, after some investigation, we noticed that about 30% of our production DBT models uh, were essentially outdated, duplicated, or completely unused. So there's a term that we like to use for this that some of you may have heard me say elsewhere um, called model atrophy. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with what atrophy is, it's just the, essentially the process of something deteriorating due to a lack of use. Um, and in our case, we noticed that a lot of our DBT models uh, had at some point in time effectively just become vestigial to us. Uh, in other words, models that were once very relevant to the company uh, over time became less and less relevant to us. And what we noticed was not only was this applicable to DBT models, but it also applied to other data assets as well, such as mode reports, Jupyter notebooks, et cetera. Um, and we knew that manually curating all of these data assets was going to be quite a Herculean effort for us. So we wanted to just see if there was a way that we could effectively automate the removal of all of these vestigial data assets. So the big question, how do we identify a vestigial DBT model? Well, it turns out in our case, it was relatively simple. Um, the overwhelming majority of downstream DBT model usage for us was in the form of mode analytics reports. Um, so for us, it was, it was pretty reasonable for us to say, if a DBT model wasn't currently being used in any mode report, then it effectively could be considered vestigial. But then the question becomes, well, how do we connect DBT models to mode reports? Um, well, the first thing we did was we created a, a DAG of mode analytics resources. Uh, so you can see here, uh, I've created an example DAG uh, with nodes here for a mode report that contains multiple queries. Uh, each of the mode query nodes in this graph has metadata attached to it that contains the underlying SQL powering that query. Uh, and then once we had that metadata, we could scan the query metadata uh, and we could essentially build, uh, we could find implicit references to DBT models within the, within the metadata. Uh, we then took the existing DAG that DBT automatically constructs under the hood. Uh, and we actually extended this graph horizontally by creating edges between DBT models uh, and mode queries that implicitly reference those DBT models. So at this point, once we have the horizontally extended graph, uh, it becomes pretty easy to identify DBT models that don't have any downstream dependencies. Uh, additionally, having these relationships in this graph uh, made it pretty easy to do this process recursively as well. So the, any model that had no recursive downstream path to an external dependency uh, was deemed a candidate to be pruned. So you can see here, for example, uh, in our graph, dbt uh, model G, F, and E would all be deemed candidates for pruning because there's no recursive downstream path to any uh, external data assets. But then we had another concern. We had, our other concern was, well, can't other kinds of data assets also become vestigial? 
So for example, let's say we have a DBT model that does have a mode report downstream of it. Um, but if no one's looking at that mode report, is the DBT model really being used? Uh, to help us account for situations like this, we automated a very similar process for mode reports um, that essentially routinely prune them on various usage metrics. Um, so right here is some code uh, from a Dagster pipeline that we use to orchestrate this entire process. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with Dagster, it's a workflow orchestration tool that's very similar to Airflow uh, with a little bit more of a modern feature set. Um, but effectively what we're doing here is we are routinely archiving and deleting mode reports that have particularly low usage or just haven't been run in a certain number of days. What's really nice about running these two processes in, in tandem, the mode pruning process and the DBT model pruning process is that they actually synergize quite nicely together. Uh, you can see here that it effectively over time creates a really nice cascading effect where as we start to prune more and more mode reports, more and more DBT models also automatically become candidates for pruning. So in practice, what does this pruning process actually look like? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, we orchestrate this entire process via uh, Dagster. And the last step of this pipeline is actually automatically opening a PR containing all of the models that are being proposed to be pruned. Uh, and we've set this up so that it's, it's relatively simple to go in and cherry pick specific models out of here uh, in cases where a mistake has been made or something like that. So the good news is that this process seems to work quite well. Uh, the chart here shows the number of DBT models uh, that we're deploying in our main DBT job on the Y axis. Uh, and you can see that this automated pruning process helped us get down from somewhere about uh, 520 models at our peak to about 375 models today. So ultimately much more manageable for our data team and our stakeholders as well. That's about it. Uh, I hope this was helpful uh, or insightful to anyone. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to contact me in any of these channels. Thanks.